Okay, so here we go with our first new style of lecture. Um, the topic is bond energy, and we define it as the energy required to break one mole of bonds in the gas phase. And if we write out the chemical equation for this, we would say X2 in the gas phase, the bond is broken and turns into 2X in the gas phase. And the change in energy this process is the bond energy. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the three main things that affect the bond energy. So I'll write those out for you. All right, so the bond energy is affected by three things, as I mentioned. And we might already have a pretty good handle on this, but it's nice to write them out and talk about the details. So one is the size of the atoms involved. The second is bond order. And the third is polarity. And each of these things we already know, but we're going to kind of put them all together and see how they affect the bond energy and sometimes when they work together. Okay, so we will start with the size of the atoms involved. All right, so to start with, we got to think about how we talk about the size of atoms. So let's say that we have an atom of hydrogen, and it's this size. And if we had a bond between this and another hydrogen atom, you can tell my atoms aren't perfect. That's fine. Um, so the bond distance is going to be between the nucleus of one and the nucleus of the other. And so the way we would do this is we'd figure out the radius of one hydrogen and we'd add it to the radius of the other. And so um, in this case, the radius of a hydrogen atom, which we can look up on the website, which I'll do now, is 37 picometers. And remember that a picometer is 10 to the minus 12 meters. So then the bond distance here would be equal to 74 picometers, which is basically two times the radius. Okay. Um, and so if this was, again, a hydrogen atom bonded to another hydrogen atom, um, we could look this up and we would see that the bond energy would be 432 kilojoules per mole. And this is not a number that can be calculated. This is a number that would be measured. And so we're getting this off of a table. Okay. And so if we then look at, let's say, a fluorine atom, which is bigger than a hydrogen atom. And there's its nucleus. And then we have another fluorine atom and its nucleus. And then if we were to look at the bond distance here, again, we would, the radius of one plus the radius of the other. And the radius of a fluorine atom. We can look up, which is 72 picometers. So the bond distance.
would be 144 picometers, which again is just two times the radius. And so what we've talked about is that the longer the bond, generally speaking, the weaker the bond. And so we would imagine that that would hold true here. So the bond energy for a fluorine to fluorine bond would be 159 kilojoules per mole. So here we see a longer bond is a weaker bond. And so these are the, this is kind of the evidence that supports the idea of the atom size affecting the bond strength. So if we put two bigger atoms together, we're going to have a longer bond length, and therefore we're going to have a weaker bond. And I want to point out that the hydrogen bond that we're using here is a single bond between two hydrogen atoms and the fluorine fluorine bond is a single bond between two fluorine atoms and so the reason why that's important is because these both are nonpolar bonds because they have the same atom attached so we're going to talk about polarity in a little bit and they're also only single bonds so they have a bond order of one so we're not talking about some comparing something with a bond order of one to something with a bond order of two. Okay, so let's go on to talk about bond order now. Okay, and we've discussed bond order in lecture, so we already we already know what this is about. But let's look at some numbers here. So I'm going to look at a single, single bond between two carbon atoms. And we'll pick a real molecule. And so um, for this one, this, this has a bond order equal to 1. And again, this is for the carbon-carbon bond specifically. And then if we had another molecule where we had a carbon carbon double bond here we would have a bond order of two and so you can imagine that a double bond requires more energy to break than a single bond and I think most of us have a handle on that um, but we're gonna put some numbers to it and so then we can have this carbon carbon triple bond um, and these molecules might look familiar to you. We had the joy of writing out the orbital overlap diagrams of these things with their pi bonds and whatnot. Okay, so again, we're focusing on the carbon-carbon bond here. So if I'm going to break a carbon-carbon single bond, the average bond energy that we would find would be 347 kilojoules per mole okay um and this is an average so like if you had a molecule with a bunch of different carbon carbon single bonds this is what you would find on average but kind of what's connected to the carbons influences this a little bit okay. um, for a carbon carbon double bond we would again look these numbers up in a table and this would be we'd have this is 614 kilojoules per mole okay so it's important to note that the double bond something the bond order of two is going to have a higher bond energy right you're gonna to have to break two bonds instead of one so it's going to take more energy um, but it's not double and so it turns out that if we compare these two numbers the difference between them is 267 kilojoules Um, so I would say the, the difference between these numbers is 267 kilojoules. So by adding the second bond, you're not doubling the bond energy. And there's a couple reasons for this, but the main one is that a single bond is a sigma bond. And then a double bond is a sigma bond and a pi bond. So what this is showing us is that a pi bond is not the same strength as a sigma bond. 
And so if we go over here and we put the bond energy of a triple bond, we would find that it's going to be 839 kilojoules per mole. And again, if we look at the difference between these two, what we would find is that this is 225 kilojoules per mole. And so this is kind of interesting because the to go from a double bond, which has a sigma bond and a pi bond, we're going to a triple bond, which has a sigma bond and two pi bonds. So you might expect the difference to be another 267 kilojoules because we're adding the same type of bond that we did going from a single to a double. Um, and this is where the second distinction comes in. So one reason, again, that a double bond is not twice as much as a single bond is because the second bond is a pi bond. The other reason is that you're just putting more electrons into a same confined area, and so you end up having more electron-electron repulsion, which um, makes it so that the bonds aren't going to be as strong. And that's what we see when we go from a double to a triple. Even though we're adding another pi bond, that second pi bond is not as strong as the first, um, because, again, you're adding more electrons into a confined area, so you're getting this electron-electron repulsion. Okay, and the third one, the third reason, or the third effect that ha we have on the um, bond energy is based on polarity, which is the most interesting to me. Um, and so um, I'm going to pause the video here, and then I'm going to basically upload this. And then I will start a new video explaining polarity.